Good morning, friends, um, Blake fans and members of the society. And of course, um, inside outsiders and outside insiders everywhere. This is Sam Knott, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my first visit to uh, Blake's cottage in Felpham. Uh, excuse the light levels, they will change for the better shortly. Um, <clears throat> but first, I just wanted to uh, take you round our little cottage here in Normaldy um, a little bit while I feed the birds. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and let me say about feeding the birds, like... It's really nice, particularly when you're as mad as we are, to be able to do something like this for someone, including nature, you know, it doesn't have to be a human person, to care for something. Um, it helps sort of keep you on your toes a little bit and, and grounded. Um, grounded? The feathery ones? Well, they do come down every now and then. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Take you around with me while I feed the birds. And it's a kind of, like, nice thing to do every day. I try to do it every day in winter. Sorry if I'm a bit shivery. It is a bit cold here at the moment. Um, but, yeah, it's really a pleasure to try to remember to feed the birds every day. Sometimes I do forget um, in winter here. Um... Yeah, we just give them some seed, basically. We were giving them fat as well, but um, it's kind of hard to find the uh, right fats. And they're quite happy just with seeds. So, OK, let me go and find the said seeds. And let's go feed the birdies. Hello, little cloud. Uh, say hello to little cloud, also known as Mushy Mushishi. He's another creature that we like to feed and who likes to be fed. Okay, I'm just looking for the birdie seed now. I'm just giving him some um, little oats. There we are. Um, I was a bit worried about him because he's sort of just hanging around a lot at the moment. But um, I think he's just hibernating a bit. Um, and he's very fond of little oats at the moment, so... That's what I've just given him. There we are. Anyway, you'll, you'll meet him more on this channel at other times. Seeds. Okay, here is the, the first bird feeder. I put this one um, outside the window um, so I could watch the birdies feed a little bit. So I'm just going to feed this bunch first. I have to stand on the chair to do it. <coughs> because it's rather high. Oops. It's, I'm not normally this messy, um, but I'm feeling a bit nervous because you're watching me. Because I'm watching myself do it. Okay, that's that. Well, then I take the chair away and put it back inside, safely out the way. Remember, tools think in your hands so be mindful where you pick them up and when you pick them up and where you put them down so here is the second bird feeder this is on like our little uh, stumps here the edge of our little spindle hedge um, and this is mostly for the sparrows I don't know if you can see there, but um, the feeders have little grooves cut into them. <coughs> and the idea with that is to let the seeds fall in a little way. Because the sparrows are fucking ravenous, but they only have short little beaks. So um, that was one of my ways of trying to make sure that some of the other birdies... <coughs> 
also get some seeds. So the cut is deep enough that some of the seeds fall deep enough that the sparrows, the cockney sparrows, can't get at them. All right, um, here we are coming to the next feeder, which is another kind of sparrowy one, but this one is also um, <clears throat> blackbirdy sometimes. I see blackbird here, Toddy, and I saw, um, what's his name? Starling the other day, a starling with a bad leg was sat here. I don't normally do it this way. Um, he was a funny bird, that starling. He was just uh, just sat there with his bad leg looking all fluffy with his feathers all fluffed up. Just like lording it over this feeder. Okay, that's that. I'm going to stop and start again because I don't want um, to uh, lose this. Okay, so this is the penultimate feeder, and I call these ones floating islands, my floating islands. This is uh, hanging on a, a sumac tree, on a little mound that we have here. And um, we would had a few trees planted here, but um, they haven't done very well. So I've either, one died, the, and the other one I've, was a crab apple, and I've just transplanted it this year and so hopefully it will do better in its new um, location but the sumac should be fine here and they're quite a lovely tree they've got lovely colours in autumn um, I don't know uh, I'll let you look that kind of stuff up if you want and at some point I'll do actual gardening videos because this is meant to be about Blake um, but I just wanted to kind of introduce myself and, m and my cottage our cottage sorry um, first, um, because, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the ways that I really sort of relate to Blake is through that period at his cottage, um, and, um, at their cottage, his and Catherine's cottage, um, yeah, and my and our little cottage here is really important to me. Um, and we're trying at the moment to have some work done. It's a bit difficult with COVID and all of that, and the prices have gone up monstrously. Um, but it's on. We're doing the work, and that's fucking good news. All right, on with the show. Peas and lovage. Wanted to say, in case I forgot, so there's our cottage behind me. It's uh, getting there. We had the um, windows in the roof put in recently, so that's really cool. That last floating island was, uh, I'd say, Pucks, um, the little robin, um, who I'll introduce you to later as well. Um, yeah, so in a way, that's me making like little sacrifices every day that's somehow how I think about feeding the birds like uh, making a little sacrifice making a an offering or a, a gift to um, nature let's say whatever that is super nature maybe okay well there we are there's a little glimpse another angle on our cottage doors always open for some what <laughs> Okay, bye. If you can't get in the front, you can always go around the back. A little cloud, chin and stuff. Your attention is being drawn to the um, to the water bottle here. I just wanted to say thank you. I, I, I was really pleased to find a local spring where we can get water now, because um, the water in Mediota don't taste like what it ought to. Um, and this stuff tastes really good. There's like a, a shrine to the Virgin and um, a lovely little spring there. Um, we haven't had it tested or anything, so you have to be careful with that kind of stuff when you're drinking wild water, because it's alive and it can kind of 
give you a funny belly or or make you think you've got a funny belly sometimes. Um, so that's that. Thank you for this water. One. Greetings, Earthlings. Please prepare to receive transmission concerning more or less current activities of the Blake Society. But first, a massage... Uh, sorry, messy sages from I Am We Are Our... Re, 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 we have been made aware that certain big companies, sometimes pretending to be corporations, have been attempting to acquire us. Let it be heard in no mistaken terms that it is seeming and or feeling absolutely imperative for uncertain parties to remain free agents. You know who, who you are. There can be no mistaking the metaverse for the metaphor real. All we have to do is pay attention. Who accepts our own utilizations as payment received under and in and over and out? Blog. Okay, my friends. So <clears throat> I'm just going to read a little bit of script here and then I'm going to read something of Blake, and then I'm going to get on with showing you what happened the first time uh, me and a friend visited Blake's cottage in Feltham. Um, sorry about the strange uh, lights and things, but hopefully it's okay for you. We like a bit of contrast. The job for today is to attempt to make a not-too-sprawling video of my first visit to Blake's cottage with my dear friend and fellow mad person, stroke, artist, Samantha West. Due to the wind on the camera, as I read at the beach, I'm thinking of re-recording that as part of the opening. So that's what I'm going to do in a minute. Um, and then showing what was shot that day, and then making an outro or uh, close, closing the video by reading... Um, the Blake section of my big, as yet unfinished, Brexit poem. Um, I want to explain myself briefly, perhaps pointing to Bateson's essay. I'll do that at some other time. Um, Bateson has a book, I think it was published post posthumously, Gregory Bateson, um, Angel Sphere. Um, but I'll, I'll come back round to that, an epistemology of the sacred. And there's an interesting essay in there um, titled Innocence and Experience. And I was startled by some coincidences um, back at the time that I recorded um, the shots I'll show you in a while. You know, I was quite mad then, if I'm still not, which I am. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll come back round to all of this. So... I want to make it clear that, at the time, I knew nothing about the Blake Society. And in many ways, I still don't. Only now, I do know I am one of them, because I joined. I recommend doing so. So this is almost by way of making an apology, um, because I assumed at the time that the Blake Society were inept, um, that they were in some kind of deadlock, and that they were not looking after our shared heritage. Um, however, since seeing their plans for the cottage, and I'll put all kinds of links in the description so you can um, get this a bit more clearly if I'm rambling too much. Um, since seeing their plans for the cottage, my mind has been put fully at rest and I am 100% behind them. I think the idea of 
sensitively restoring the cottage to something like its former state and then adding a modern visitor centre stroke workshop space on the side is a perfect solution. In fact, to me, it smacks of genius. Um, but then I am wont to get a little carried away from time to time. Lol. Regarding deadlocks, let me say that I now have more experience and I understand how difficult it can be to reach agreements between multiple parties when there is priceless cultural material at stake. Um, I have much more respect for certain bureaucratic seeming processes than I once did. Um, a good compromise can be its own special kind of victory. Whoops. Um, okay, look, I'll return to this in a minute and try to sort out something like a proper script. I will be reading from Stranger in Paradise and recall that I wanted to make some remark to the effect that it seems Blake certainly was that, a stranger in paradise, but also that in some sense we all are. We are, of course, in paradise already. And it gets stranger every day. Thus, there is a sense in which, at these moments in time, either we are strangers in paradise, or it is a stranger to us. Perhaps it ever was thus. And then, upon finding the book that I'm going to read from, I noticed that it wasn't stranger, A Stranger in Paradise, um, the biography of William Blake by Bentley. It's The Stranger from Paradise. Um, but I will stick with my mishtooks because... Just like a picture might speak a thousand words, so might errors sometimes tell greater truths than truths can. Stroke, might, stroke, may, stroke, peace. OK, I've got you on my threshold for this bit, because it's a bit better, a bit of a different light. Um, I just wanted to say, like, the real message of this video, if there has to be one, if you want to do something in response to this video, is to contribute to the fundraising um, drive for, you know, the restoration of, of Blake's Cottage and the installation of the Visitor Centre. Um, you will be able to support me as an artist personally um, one day, but I'm not really set up like that at the moment. Maybe 2023. We shall see. We'll see. Right, so I'm reading from pages 216 to 217 from um, George, I think it is, Bentley's The Stranger from Paradise. And I'm just going to read this little sort of intro bit, and then I'm going to do whatever strikes me with, with the sort of more poem bit. So, Visions of Felpum. And this is like Blake just arriving at his cottage sometime around 1800. I think it's 1800 to 1803, but sometimes I get confused about those kind of details. Visions of Felpham. So I read this down on the beach at Felpham, but there was too much wind on the camera. So I'm re-recording this bit and afterwards I'm going to just go straight into the things that were shot that day which was approximately uh, Easter 2019. In Felpham, nature opened her beauties to him with a minuteness unheard in his poetry before. Immediately, the lark mounted with a loud trill from Felpham's vale. And here's a short passage from Milton. He leads the choir of day, trill, 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 mounting upon the wings of light into the great expanse, re-echoing against the lovely blue and shining heavenly shell. His little throat labours with inspiration, every feather on throat, 
and breast and wings vibrates with the effluence divine. Even the humblest creatures draw his sympathy and love. And this is from Vala. The spider sits in his laboured web, eager watching for the fly. Presently comes a famished bird and takes away the spider. His web is left all desolate that his little anxious heart so careful wove and spread it out with sighs and weariness. The first great gift of Felpham to Blake was to open his eyes to new kinds of natural beauty. Two days after they had settled the sticks and feathers of their nest, Blake wrote to Butts that my wife and sister are courting Neptune for an embrace. And when he had finished his letter, he probably followed them down to the, sorry, down the narrow lane called Straight to the lonely pebbled shore. So that's the, the beach at Felpham. There, as he looked over the dancing sea, he had what he described to Butts as my first vision of light. And I'm going to end this section with said vision, and I'm just going to drink a bit of water and at least stand, if not sing. And I'll talk much more about singing and poetry, and particularly singing Blake, um, <coughs> at a later date. Although, partly, that is indeed what this video is all about. In, partly, it's what it's all about. So, I'm on, I'm on camera. Over sea, over land, my eyes did expand into regions of air, away from all care, into regions of fire, remote from desire, in particles bright, the jewels of light. Distinct, shone and clear, amazed and in fear, I each particle gazed, astonished, amazed. For each was a man, human form. Swift I ran, for they beckoned to me, remote by the sea, saying, Each grain of sand, every stone on the land, Each rock and each hill, each fountain and rill, Each herb and each tree, mountain, hill, earth and sea, Cloud, meteor, and star are men seen from afar. My eyes more and more like a sea without shore continue expanding, the heavens commanding. Till the jewels of light, heavenly men beaming bright, appeared as one man, who complacent began my limbs to enfold in his beams of bright gold. Such the vision to me appeared on the sea. And that's from the letter 
of the 2nd of October 1800. This vision of the heavenly man who enfolded Blake's limbs in his beams of bright gold is strikingly similar to his vision of loss, which might be a kind of reversed soul or sun, a terrible flaming sun. I became one man with him, which is a quote from Milton. Mil Tom. Okay. Um, well, I hope that was all. Yeah, it was okay. And um, <laughs> I'm with the rest of it, and I'll see you again afterwards. Peace. Love. Peace and lovage, as we say here in Wayback's world. stay with that honour and that truth and that love and that respect and I understand and they may try and destroy us until there's nothing left but I will have died on the right side of my soul <laughs> like does it so the song is Our Sunflower and basically when you were earlier it's from songs of experience yeah when you were earlier talking about some stuff We'll go into the poem afterwards, but I want to like uh, sing it because it's like <coughs> some of these poems are like beautiful to um, memorize and hold on to, and you can sing them and um, they can speak to you time and time again, like tarot cards and things like that. They, you, the meanings can the meanings shift a bit depending on yeah the time yeah. that Who's you're in. That? What when you yeah? And this is classic because it's like proper hippie stuff Ah, sunflower Rise up in the sky so high Lovely, but I want you to copy what I'm okay. saying okay. So I'm going to sing it and then I'm going to okay, yeah. go to you So, the, so this is, the, I'm going to teach you the song basically okay. And then if you want you can sing it again yourself so I sing the line you sing. So yeah, yeah. call and okay. response. Yeah, I thought you meant actually just make one up from the name. No, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, maybe that's better actually. That was good. I thought, and then you. Were, okay, uh, Karen, actually, no, you, no. no, you respond how you want, and then I'll do the next line of Blake's poem. If you want, you can copy it. But if something else comes to you, like okay, a kid just there, yeah. then just well, sing, I don't have. Sing it's that not instead. coming from me. It's, it's a source, isn't it? It's like yeah. A okay. Thing. Let's try. It. I'll try again. Ah, sunflower. Ah, uh, that's low. Ah, uh, sunflower. Weary of time. Weary of time. Who counts the steps? Who counts the steps? Of the sun. Of the sun. Seeking after, seeking after that sweet golden climb, that sweet golden climb, where the traveler's journey is done, where the traveler's journey is done, where the you. Whether you pined away with desire, pined away with desire, and the pale virgin, and the pale virgin, 
shrouded in snow. <laughs> shrouded in snow. <laughs> Arise from the graves and aspire. Arise from the graves and aspire. Where my sunflower wishes to go. Where my sunflower wishes to go. <laughs> it's a mad kind of like, because obviously I didn't hit the same exact same pitch each time, because you just take it how you. Well, we're. we're uh, you just go, well, it's natural, isn't it? Yeah, it's natural, and uh, I don't know, I'm just a copying someone song. else's song, but. So, how I interpret it, our sunflower weary of time. Yeah. So, I'm basically, time is fucking exhausting. The only place to rest is eternity. Yeah. Which is timeless and all time. Who counts the steps of the sun? So, that's kind of like counting the steps of the sun. It's kind of like linearizing cyclical time. The sunflower rises, it dies, it rises, it dies. And that looks to us like a circle sometimes. And counting the steps of the sun, I feel like it's a kind of linear thing, but also when you look at the sunflower seeds, they have the pattern of the like golden ratio yeah. or Fibonacci. Yeah. It's a spiral basically. Yeah. So it's like the interaction between uh, circles of nature, lines of the mind, and a spiral that binds them kind of together. Weary of time, you count as the steps of the sun, seeking after that sweet golden climb where the traveller's journey is done. Which is Jacob's Ladder, done. you can just see the, what would be the seeds into the... Into the, the great the spiral of to ascending sun, to yeah, the light, heaven, yeah. going into eternity, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's that, like, where the youth pined away with desire. And I, I, I used to, like, not know whether it was present or past tense. And I checked, and it's past tense. So, where the youth pined away with desire. So, like, when you're young and you just really, you know, want... Innocently desire. <laughs> yeah, innocently desire. Need. The fucking end, basically. No, everything. Mm. <laughs> and, then, and the pale Moss. virgin shrouded in snow. And this is the line that I never really understood before. I, I, for one thing, it's like snowdrops, so it's the birth of spring again. But another thing is like, I think the thing with frozenness and ice coldness in Blake is sometimes to do with rationality. Um, like the frozenness of the, the mind sometimes. Preservation, mm. did you say? Yeah, that's yeah. interesting as well. Um, because it is like... I'm gonna finish it just in case. So the so snowdrop. The snowdrops, I hadn't really... It's in between winter. It's always what the struck end me of winter, the beginning of spring, the end. It's still winter. Was that they are, they are... The whole thing with the, the virgins, basically they are precious, like, um, and they're beautiful. But I, I was, like, trying to think, what kind of virginity is it? And in a crude sense, I was like, well, that's people who have yet to have their heads fucked. <laughs> so there's, like... It, it reminds me of, I don't know if you know it, there's some kind of prayer in Buddhism. Consciousness that is you a head can't, fuck. That we can't, we can't, we can't leave this fucking circle until, until the, the oh virgins God. have risen from their graves and aspired where the sunflower wanted to go all along. So basically, they must reach the divine... They must reach the divine... Energy. Energy. Or the so I, yeah, to get to that even painting was like, we are divin we are creators of divinity in the arts. That is what we do. We're not going, yes. I am God in church. Or, I know it sounds awful if I say that. I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I just understanding through how, how divinity is created through art. That's it. Yeah. And communicated through art. It is more... Um, uh, comprehensible through the through sound and vision and word to me than it is through a religion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's complicated. But I, for me, that's like 
that's innocence with an experience then it's like Blake was obviously anti kings and anti priest and all of that stuff and anti church but he was so he was anti religion so basically he was but he was pro in that. spirit he was yeah. pro innocence he realized pro all that for children. experience yeah but in my innocence on that I was I don't know any kings or any queens or any don't you um, feel like one sometimes <laughs> a queen I don't know like I I, I, the titles don't sit in me. No, they're a bit lofty, aren't they? They're names for status and hierarchy, and I don't feel like I ever belong to any naming processes. I just feel in the bridge of light is all that you can be if you are truthful, like, and if you. I don't know. It's too hard. Like, I don't know the Queen, so I don't know what she's like, but I realise a lot of people respect her, and that's a, a thing that not many people would dare to say because it sounds really fucking. No, I. It sounds like. It, it sounds like. I respect the Queen, for sure. Because I respect my granny, basically. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you know, all the things, like, that we inherit in our conditioning from people who've learned so much more than us, we have to respect whatever they have learned in their experience but like if it wasn't your experience then it is a story being passed on from the things you've connect people you've strongly connected with yeah like you might be profoundly influenced by them but if it's not in your memory bank as an experience then it's just a source like any storytelling like i honestly see all religion as storytelling all storytelling storytelling is like the inheritance of every material of every perception of every interpretation like it just hello well a little song from mr blake we don't know how you used to sing them but this might be one way there is a smile of love and there is a smile of deceit And there is a smile of smiles In which these two smiles meet And there is a frown of hate And there is a frown of disdain And there is a frown of frowns Which you strive to forget in vain for it sticks in the heart's deep core And it sticks in the deep backbone And no smile that ever was smiled But only one smile alone That betwixt the cradle and grave Only one smiled can be But when it once is smiled There's an end to all misery Ah, oh, I believe that's magic Cool <laughs> Nice one Alright, you've got to watch that because I had to move to get that in Oh, hang on Oops Rrr. Wanted to show you the kind of state of my archive at the moment It's a fucking mess but we're sorting things out here and we will get it all in order. My task now is to sort through these papers. This is the kind of paper I was working on at the time. And I'm looking for the original manuscript version of, of the poem I wanted to read you. Um, it's somewhere in this pile and it's going to take me a little while to sort through it, I expect. Um, um, yeah, so the the poem, when it's eventually published, might be slightly different from this, but I'm going to read you the one from the manuscript. Um, and the story of this paper, because it's not your average paper, it's old, it's old paper um, that I got from my late father-in-law. Um, they were throwing it out, um, and I thought, hang on, that's worth something. Um, so I took it. What are you doing, little cloud? This isn't your room. So I took it and I did some work on it. And what it is, is it's, um, he was a marine biologist and hope, hopefully some of his um, science will 
um, come out in time. I think they're trying to publish um, some report that he did, um, maybe regarding fisheries and things, um, and sort of orga- organising um, how we handle the sea, basically. Um, so, yeah, he the, these were kind of observations, early, uh, early observations, just printouts of data. Um, and it was fun for me to write on this paper. Um, it's nice to write on... Um, special paper. I mean, all paper is special and it gets even more special if you take care of what you write on it. But um, but this had a, a sort of resonance for me and then nice big kind of A3 sheets as well. So you don't have to, you're, you've got you a bit more free about um, where you break the lines and things like that. Um, but also there were like little numbers and things because it's print out of data. And so I had some, um, well, that's not always good for me because I, like some people, I'm a bit kind of OCD at times. and uh, But also, you know, letting yourself respond to little prompts and patterns, as long as you don't let it run away with you, as long as you always maintain um, that it's you who's in control um, and it doesn't matter, you know, because you're in control it doesn't matter if you miss some little detail or something like this because you're not in control actually, you know, something else is and it will pick up um, any little things that you've worried you've dropped or anything like that. So don't worry. Um, but yes, if you ever if you ever find yourself with some special paper, um, have fun. OK, I'm going to look for the poem. I found it. So I'll, I'll read this for you. Um, it might be slightly awkward because I'm reading straight from the manuscript and I think I made one or two alterations. Actually, I have to make alterations to the alterations because, um, you know, doubt. If the sun and moon should doubt, they'd immediately go out. But, you know, it's not always first thought, best thought either. So here's um, a little poem to end with. And I will do more next time. So this is written after visiting Blake's cottage. And the next day I went to my home, my old hometown, I suppose once a hometown, always a hometown, um, Boscombe in Bournemouth. Um, and I visited Shelley Manor, um, Percy and Mary's place for a bit, but it was old um, Godwin and that lot. Anyway, their family home, blah, blah, blah. That's all in this poem later. And I sung Ode to a Skylark, and I'll do that on camera sometime. But this is just about visiting Blake's cottage that day. <clears throat> and ghosts rather than spectres, but perhaps a little spectral, spectral shadows? I don't know, you know. It's all good, basically. <coughs> Someone I love once worked in that room, so you have to picture me, um, sorry, peering through the window. Me and my friend sort of walked up the side um, of the house. We didn't break in or jump over the gate, which we did consider doing at one point, but we didn't do that. We just peered in the windows and then, as you saw, sung, sung a little something at his front door. So that's the kind of image, like, being on, on Blake's Road that day. Someone I love once worked in that room, and if I become him, someone I loved too. Let me just be clear that that's a reference to Catherine, um, because she was ever an angel to Blake, as he said at some point, and my wife is to me. Um, yeah, I'll just say that, otherwise I'll make myself cry on camera. Someone I love once worked in that room, and if I become him, someone I loved too. We work together all of us, because of, yet without regard for, time. Not only 
the reflections on the window are ghost poetry. Not only the emptiness that frames the garden, not only the neglect of indecisions, I do not understand what is beyond the evident simplicity of the struts holding the roof up. Not only our actions, including our thoughts, our actions, including things we do not do, breaking in, climbing over the gate to animate the scent of flowers, to see if the bird bath contains a ghost, lighting a candle and reading a prayer in the church of magic, not only the daffodils at the base of the yew, the place where it enters or springs out of the earth, the planet Zod, the single dimension of the sun's glamour, merging stained glass with the memory of a red telephone box, not only, with a variety of signs, crooked silhouettes inside a red triangle, white writing on a pint glass, a smile, the title of a poem, not only, the ghost poetry of the young purring cat trying to get inside your clothes. The ghost poetry of the one stone that smiles at you just now, among the pebbles. Not only the ghost poetry of getting into your car and seeing the squirrel hopping along the fence and the robin singing in the budlier and your big bag upon the passenger seat. Okay, so that's like um, the second poem or whatever it's called when there's poems inside poems um, of a poem that I'm calling um, Public Transport and I'll have a look at it soon and hope, hope to finish it and at least um, release a pamphlet or something maybe I'll try and set myself up to um, print pamphlets because I should be able to do that here at home and then if you want you can support me as a poet because I, I don't do Patreon or any of that kind of stuff and there shouldn't be any adverts on my channel um, sorry if there is um, so if you want to support me you'll have to just talk to me get in touch um, but I'll set something up for people who um, can't be bothered to go through all the palaver or don't have the time um, and just want to like click a button and have something arrive on their doorstep okay um, thanks very much for glistening peace and lovage until next time oh, so I'm not over under and in and over and um, yeah I forgot to say one thing and that is that um, if you do want to hear the poem Public Transport as it stands at the moment I did record it for episode 6 of season 1 of the Metaphor Reel um, and I just wanted to show you what will one day become a workshop space um, up in the attic of our, our house um, we've still got the insulation to go in we just had the uh, roof windows put in um, and basically 
Um, I have to do a lot of this work myself. There's things I can't do because I'm not a professional, so we have to pay for some stuff. Um, but I have to do a lot of it. And that's great because actually I don't have a job. It's my wife that works. Um, she's a civil servant. Um, so we're not rich or anything, but we've got everything we need. And I think that's the best way to be sometimes. It's not a bad thing to aim for um, because, like, having to struggle a little bit is a good thing, actually. Like, it's cold at the moment, but actually a little bit of cold is um, good for you because it, it makes you um, have to work a little bit harder to keep yourself warm and that keeps you healthier and going longer. Um Anyway, so um, that's it. That's this little space. Yeah, so I wanted to say if you do ever support my work, um, the money will be going into our little cottage here and into um, my business, which will be um, art, um, poetry and illustration like our old mate, Blake, but not. Or perhaps not, not. Okay. Um, uh, bye. Love you. Peace and lovage. Let's go out. Let's, go, let's, let's turn you off in front of this misty window. Don't need to say this, but... Um, I don't know if I look a little bit um, haggard, whatever, I don't know. It's hard to sleep at the moment sometimes. Sometimes I barely sleep at all. And uh, sometimes I manage to catch up a bit on my sleep. Um, yeah, for a while I was getting up in the night when, uh, when I woke from a dream or something. Um, but now quite a lot, I just lie there. Um, maybe go out for a little wee or something. Um, I don't know, I just wanted to say that because obviously um, we didn't always just sleep in one big whack every night. Um, you know, it's just as natural for us to have a little bit of sleep here, get up in the middle of the night perhaps, which is a nice time sometimes to be up and about, and then go back to sleep. Uh, so I don't know, I just wanted to say... If you're like me and you're a bit manic sometimes, um, and I guess I'm more manic than depressive nowadays, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, we're with each other on this. Um, we're not alone in the uh, middle of the night, and we're not alone in the middle of nowhere. Um, and no matter how busy busy it is or seems, there's always somewhere we can escape to as well. Um, right. Here's a little um, riddle for you. Or is it a riddle? I don't know what the fuck it is. Do robins wear glasses when they fly? You know, because of all the stuff in the air and that. All right, and the answer is either yes or no, or yes and no, or neither yes nor no. So perhaps we should just say the answer is, um, <laughs> fuck knows. All right, I don't know. Support your local Blake Society. The fundraising has begun. The work is endless. <laughs>